Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are y'all doing? Hi. My nephew's looking out the window at me. He got up very early this morning. <coughs> the air is very heavy here. You can see it's foggy outside. The air is very heavy. Um, but that's okay because it'll clear off in a little while. Um, I really like when it's foggy because it's so quiet. The air, is, the sounds are dampened a little bit. And there's dew on everything. It's super, super that's weird, to, hard to describe the exact words. Okay. Yeah, I always play those shoes. I always play in it. Okay. They're okay where they're at. I'll come out right here too. If you want to, but you got to be quiet because I'm doing a video. Yeah. Um, I like being in, in the woods. Like whenever I would go hunting all the time. I don't do it very often now, hardly ever, because I can't hardly walk out in the woods anymore. But... Uh, when I would, I'd love to be out when it was foggy like this, and uh, or even if it was snowing. It's so quiet, and uh, the sound of the snow, when it gets that quiet, you can hear the snow, and it sounds like a steady rainfall, but it's a really slow rainfall. I love it, and there's even scripture that talks about the treasure hidden in the snow. Um, everything in God's creation, it has some kind of magic behind it, or some kind of mystical design behind it and you can get you know you can get a ethereal in your mind about it but the Bible you know when the Bible talks about it and then you go and you look at it especially from a standpoint of, of a born-again believer you see those things in there and it's awesome to see it, um, it that kind of stuff helps you just like I've been talking about it, you, you start to you start to see him in everything you start to see him moving in everything go what what do, you, what do you want? Well, you can go if you want to, but you're going to get your feet all wet. No, don't go in the bathroom. Don't pee out here. Go in the bathroom. What's the matter with you? Little boys. I'm trying to film a video. They don't want to hear that. Um, <clears throat> when you start to see him more and you start to see him moving, um, it changes your view of everything. It changes your view of the world. Changes your, I mean, it really, really makes a difference. And the closer you draw to him and the more you pattern everything you do to glorify God, it uh, it changes things. And this is one of the big regrets I have with when people get into doctrine and the doctrine becomes their God. The doctrine becomes a false idol. And it's so, so funny because because when they do that, it, it denies all these greater aspects of the message, of of the the spirit filled life, the the life following after Christ, and they say it's works. They keep telling you it's works, and it's not works. If you're saved, and He gave His blood for you, and that means something to you, don't should don't you want to follow after Him? I do. Now they'll tell you this. It's all these other things. You read the Bible. The Bible tells you exactly what to do. It's so simple. Leave the door open. It's so simple. But because of doctrine, people don't want to preach that kind of message. And if you do, they come against you and they harass you like crazy. Hence, I reached out to Sherry Rich last night and uh, told her that, you know, it's probably my fault because, because of what I did. And I told her I apologize. I said, you know, whatever differences we have, I'm, uh, I'm, Love you, and I don't. I'm sorry that this is happening. Armor up, be prepared. Um, and she responded very favorably back to it, and several other people did too. Uh, and one person in particular responded, and they said they worship their doctrine and not their God. And immediately I thought, that's exactly right. And I do believe there's scripture about that. And if I can find it, I'll do a video at noon about that. Um, but I, that immediately hit me and Sherry and a couple other people responded. They were like that. That's exactly right. And it is, you can end up making doctrine, your God, and you can make, uh, make it, um, uh, an idol. And now you're idol worshiping. You're worshiping something other than God, anything else that you worship in any way that's other than God is idol worship. And I'm looking at that and it's like, that's exactly what that is because the whole thing is. Uh, there's there's groups of people that are, uh, I guess, quote unquote, religious, that it's this doctrine and that's it. You cannot deviate outside these parameters. And that's so wrong. The doctrine of salvation is singular. But there are so many more aspects to all the other scripture. 
and all of us see something a little different. And I, you guys know I've always taught you this. The, the, the word of God is a diamond. It's multifaceted. And we all see in a different facet. So we all see a little bit different something. And it's awesome because when we come together in fellowship and share that, everybody benefits. But we've had this evil influence that's been over all this kind of stuff. And it's con convinced people that the, their, their doctrine and understanding has to align with other people's, and it doesn't. Salvation is grace through faith. That's it. Everything else, else is subject to interpretation. The Bible says it's subject to interpretation. So if each one of us sees something a little different, that should be a blessing to us, not an opportunity or an excuse for a bunch of supposed grace people to go and rail on somebody about that. Now, we can be right or wrong on that, that kind of stuff. It, it's not about right or wrong. It's about honoring God. It's about glorifying Jesus Christ. And that's the mark they missed. And classic demonic trait. That's, a, that's where they miss the mark. That's where they make the mistake. We're here to, why are we doing morning and evening prayer? To glorify God and glorify Jesus. To lift them up in prayer. And to lift up people to them that need help in prayer. And you go, and I showed you in numbers, I think it was, morning and evening sacrifice. And it was always associated with prayer. The sacrifice wasn't as important as the prayer that was associated with it. And we're doing that. Guys, if you're following him, if you're leading a life or living a life that's leading to him, he's going to lead you further. And you can call me a grace or works heretic. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care about that. The fact is I can read the word of God and see exactly what it tells me. And that's what I'm going to follow. I'm not going to follow somebody who tells me, well, you got to have this doctrine, otherwise you're not in our group. Then I'm not in your group. I don't want to be in a group. That's why last night I said what I said, stand up, Christian. If you have a ministry, stand up and you work your ministry according to what you're given. I'm not a preacher and I'm not a teacher. Where a lot of people talk about, I'm going to teach you what this says. I'm not that. I'm just showing you what I see. You don't have to accept it. I'm not asking anybody to believe me. I want you to come to your own conclusion about this. Because each one of us has a personal, individual relationship with Jesus Christ. Each one of us has this specific relationship with the Lord. And each one of them is different. Yet we got a bunch of people trying to make it all the same. And I don't think so. It doesn't work that way. So don't believe me. Go, go look at what's going on over there. <laughs> go look at the comments that are being shed out. It's pretty obvious what's happening. Pretty obvious who's actually grace and who isn't. All you got to do is just use a little discernment. That's all I ask anybody to do. Just use some discernment. Don't make a snap judgment. And, and when the opportunity arises, extend a hand of grace. I did that last night with Sherry Rich. I hope that sister can forgive me for standing with someone who is making up stuff about them and lying about them. I, re I regret doing that because that wasn't right. And it turns out there's a bunch of stuff that, that came out that was actually lies. So um, it's not right. And I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to go by what the Bible says. Bar none. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. So this morning we're going to pray Psalm 32. Uh, it's the joy of forgiveness. And we have our rapture verse too. It's uh, going to be Revelation 3.20, I think. If you're worshiping a doctrine, stop it. If you're trying to align yourself with a group of people and change your message to ma match that, stop it. Everybody's supposed to have a different message. Salvation is the one thing we have to agree on. Because if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you're my brother and sister. It's grace through faith. That's it. It's a standalone event. Your life after that is a personal worship between you and him. That's exactly what the scriptures say. So the life you live is the life you live for Christ. Now, what a lot of people will tell you is, is that it's all internal, but there's also an external aspect to it. So what life are you living? Are you living uh, a life for yourself and to glorify yourself and to help yourself? Or are you living a life that glorifies him? It's exactly what the Bible says. Be transformed. And... That's what I'm going to do. And I'm, I got to tell you, 
the last couple of, my brother just told me he slept better than he has been. There's changes happening in his life in the last few days. My wife has slept better than she has been. I had another great night of sleep. Other people are talking about their things in their lives changing. And it's all coinciding with exactly what's happening now. You see all the stuff that, that unloaded when we started praying for the rapture. How interesting that just over 24 hours after we started praying for the rapture, all these negative things started popping off. Sunday, I blew the lid off all this nonsense that's going on, all this demonic influence. Now look at how so many people are being blessed by doing that and how they're, they're better. Their lives are changing. There's more joy. They're being released and freed from bondage. Guys, that was bondage. Nobody can tell you this is how you have to do your ministry. That's not fair. And that's not, they don't have that authority. Each one, you can't, I can't judge another, I can't judge another man's servant. So each person stands or falls before God, not before us. It doesn't involve us. So I can't go to somebody else's ministry and say, hey, you're doing that wrong. I can go share some scripture and some fellowship and extend the hand of grace. But if they slap it away, okay, mark and avoid and move on. If they come on my channel and share a bunch of hatred, mark and avoid and move on. But just because they have a different ministry, if they believe it's grace through faith, if they believe Jesus is the Son of God, it's still saved. It's that simple. So use discernment, guys. Take the time to really analyze situations. And if, you, if you're listening to something and you have a preconceived opinion about it, say uh, somebody's teachings or, or certain videos or anything like that from certain people, don't let the person that you have the problem with distract you from the message they're being given because if they believe Jesus is the son of God, they're still saved. And when you're eating that bowl of grapes, don't just eat them without looking at them. Take the sour ones and chuck them and just eat the sweet ones. Take the wrinkled up ones and chuck them and just eat the sweet ones. Everybody's message is wrong in some aspect, none of us have a perfectly clean message. None of us have a perfectly right message. So when you hear something that's a little bit incorrect, push that sour grape to the side and just take the good ones. Out of that kind of fellowship, there's love. There's blessings. We can share with each other. We can learn from each other. And it's astounding. Um, I had somebody comment on the, one of the videos I did about Babylon. And that was one of the, the ones that me and Mark were going back and forth on. And it turned out we came to an agreement on that. And Mark's a great brother, and I love him to death. Um, somebody commented on there and said, hey, you uh, did great on this, and you, you forgot these couple of points. And they shared those points, and I was like, yeah, you're right. Um, I said, but I did other videos, and I shared most of that. But you did catch some really good stuff. Uh, and it was more stuff that led to exactly to what we were talking about in there. That point's been proven, in, in, in my opinion, and it's my opinion. But the person didn't tell me I was wrong. They just offered fellowship. And I love that. Hey, what about these? I think that's great. Awesome. So I was led under that deception. And I was I was going that direction. But because, because I kept holding back, they, they got mad. Okay. And, and it's not the people, guys. Listen, please understand. It's not the people. It's not the individual person. There's a spirit of influence behind it. That's what my, where my problem is. And that's what I'm coming against. I love the people and I want them to come out from under that influence. But that spirit, we've got to do something about that spirit. Excuse me. So let's get into some prayer and let's glorify our God. We're going to pray Psalm 32. Lord, we come before you this morning. Holy Father, great King of the universe, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, man. My silence is drained like crazy. Oof. My sign is there, Trina. Hold on, hold on, I'm going to pray. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's hard when you have a four-year-old that demands every second of your attention. Hold on. I see it. Hold on. You got them all parked in the lake. Father, we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. We give thanks to you for this day. We give thanks to you for every day that you give us to come to a greater, deeper relationship with you. We thank you for every minute and every moment where we realize the truth and turn to you, where we follow after our Lord Jesus, where you show us the path and, and give us the space to choose to follow that path. 
where you show us the mistakes that we make and give us space to repent, space to change our mind, space to turn and follow after you. You did something so incredible this weekend by opening my eyes to these things. And it could have been any of a thousand people that you could have used to do this. But you opened my eyes to see what was going on and then immediately put it on my heart to expose it. These evil spiritual influence have been attacking the church for so many, well, for at least two millennia. And you opened it up and exposed it. And it's amazing. To see this stuff happen. What's even more amazing is to see the people who also had their eyes opened and didn't turn away from me because I had changed, I was starting to change what I was doing, but stuck with me, showed grace, extended grace and love to me. And now that we've blown the lid off, these people are like, we've been watching this. We see this. We're with you on this. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing group of people that fellowship with me, this amazing prayer team that I have, because the strength and power that's going behind the prayers we're making are awesome. Father, we love you, and we are so happy you called us out of this world, called us to be this and to do this, and called us up, many of us, a lot of us, up out of that deception to get us up here in the truth so we can follow after you. So we don't deny your word anymore. So we don't deny what Christ died for anymore. I want to follow my Lord. I want to follow my God. I want to be, be closer to you. And your word tells us how to do that. All we have to do is read it and not let other people tell us what to read. Tell us how to read. All we have to do is do it. Father, we thank you for helping us do that. We thank you for opening this up to us to do that with all the things that are happening in the world today all the things that are going on uh, all the really amazing things that are going on the, the evidently there's a war happening you're shining light on your people you're calling them out and preparing them for the rapture thank you lord thank you and bless you for being so kind and merciful and for showing us this love and this grace. And it's, I love it and it's awesome. And you know who loves you. Those of us that love you, we love you and we thank you for that. This morning, Father, I'd like to glorify you by praying Psalm 32, the joy of forgiveness, a Psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. And Father, I got to stop there because I can relate to verse 3. Because that's what was happening. And now that I've turned and changed and fought that off and you opened my eyes and got me out of that, that has now changed. Because I couldn't keep silent anymore. I can relate to that. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this cause everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. What a perfect psalm to uh, not only address what's happening, Father, but to glorify you in that this is what you're doing in us. I see all this stuff happening right now in the body. It's amazing. You know, my flesh wants to sit here and have regret for being deceived so long, for walking in darkness for so long. But your word says that you lead us 
through that darkness into the light. And so I look back and instead of regret, which is what I know what's, that's what Satan wants me to have, I now am in awe because I see everywhere you've led me through the darkness and now we're stepping into the light. And you're bringing so many other brothers and sisters together the same way. And I know most of you have a testimony like this. Father, what, just what, what an incredible work to see happening and to be a part of it. And it, it's exhilarating to know you are a part of it, to know that you are leading me in this amazing direction. You are guiding me and, and so many other brothers and sisters too. And it's, I'm awestruck with this and just, it's so profound. And I know my brothers and sisters are experiencing this too. Thank you, Father, for this amazing, amazing grace that you are showing us. Father, I'd like to pray Revelation 3.10 for the rapture because we're watching for the rapture and we're praying for the rapture. Father, we noticed that at the time we started to do this in our morning and evening prayers, everything changed. Just, just over 24 hours after, everything started to change and people's lives started to change in the world. And we can't help but think, and correct us, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can't help but think that that had some kind of factor into it because so many of us were praying for the rapture. So, Father, we will continue to pray because the change was good. We're ready to go when you're ready to give the command for Jesus to come and get us. We're watching for him. We're praying for him. We're expecting him. We're looking for him. We're loving this appearing very much because the world is ripping itself apart. Everything is changing. With all the things that you're showing me, Father, it's giving all the indications that the war in heaven is happening. And there's just so much, and I'll cover it later in a video. But it looks like this is the time. You've been showing us all these signs, showing us all these, these markers, and leading us up to this moment. Father, we pray for that rapture is today. We pray it's this very minute, according to your will, but our desire is that it's hap it happens right now because we see the evil one working in the world today. We just got done fighting with him, still fighting with him. So we pray, Revelation 3.10, because you have kept my word about patient endurance and we're doing our best, Father, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. And it is so blatantly obvious that trial is quickly approaching because the world is opening the door to it. And it's not just those that are doing evil. It's those that you elected to do good are joining with them. We see them standing in solidarity with the people that are burning down their businesses. What? The world is lost. It is falling apart, Father we pray that you give the command as soon as possible to send Jesus to come and to collect us and to pull us out of here. We thank you for this amazing rescue. We thank you for this amazing the amazing gift of, of deliverance from this wrath that is coming. Bring us fully into your light. Put that light into our hearts and help us to keep our eyes looking upward at you and help us to walk in a life that glorifies you exactly like your word tells us to. We love you, Father, and we thank you for this incredible mercy and grace and love that you've shown us, especially in these last days. It is in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I even feel like prayer has changed since all this stuff has come apart. You know, once you see it, you can't unsee it. There are people out there that still can't see it. And they're making all kinds of accusations against me. I don't care. I see it. And I know what it is. And it doesn't matter if anybody else sees it. It's still real. People say there is no rapture. They say the rapture is going to happen at a different time. That we're all crazy. Well, it doesn't matter. Their opinion doesn't matter. It's still going to happen regardless because it's according to God's will, not our will. Huh? You don't need more water. You gotta have breakfast first. Leave all that stuff here because it's all wet.
No. We'll come out and play later. You gotta have breakfast first. You haven't had breakfast. Why? Cause you gotta have breakfast. No. Sorry, little boys gotta eat. No. Yeah. Otherwise you'll be crabby because you get hangry. You get hangry. Like in the next 15 minutes, if you don't eat, you're gonna start getting all frustrated. So we're gonna have breakfast. Yeah. See, I know this about you. Uncle Sean takes care of you. Yeah, no. I don't want to come back here. After we get done eating, we'll come out and we'll play. Yep. Yeah. Word. Word, homie. Are you done? No. I'm still videotaping. <laughs> Hold on. After we eat breakfast. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. The world is just not fair. It's first world problems. <laughs> okay, guys. I got to get out of here so I can feed this kid. Um, do not despair and do not fret about what's going on in the world. Look at Look to God. If we see all this happening, we know what's happening next. All we got to do is just patiently endure until the time comes. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will see you guys in the next video.